One of the greatest measurements of how well we're doing in life and how well we're doing as adults is called our net worth. And our net worth is something that's really important to keep track of because it kind of gives you an idea of what is your report card in life. Now, when I was a kid going up through school and I always dreaded the day that I'd have to bring my, my report card home to my parents and see what I was really doing in school. And thankfully, most of the time I was doing pretty well, but every once in a while I would have one of those grades where I knew I was gonna get busted. So my question to you is, what is your net worth? And if you were to show me your quote unquote report card, would you get busted or would you be doing just fine? So in this video, we're gonna talk about net worth, how to calculate it, why it's important, and then I'm gonna share with you what my net worth is. My name is Paris Clough and this is Financial Self-Reliance. I absolutely love helping people manage, protect, and grow their money. And it's important really to understand how well you're growing your money as, a, as an accountability to know what your net worth is. So if you don't know what your net worth is, it's very simple calculation. Take everything that you own, meaning all of your assets, all your cash in your savings accounts, your mutual funds, your stocks, your portfolios, your 401k, your just everything that you own and add up that whole balance until you find out what the dollar amount is. And that's what you own. Now what you go and do is you subtract out everything that you owe. So the credit cards, the car loans, the mortgage, you subtract everything from that number and that determines your net worth. So if you have a positive net worth, you're doing great. If you're break, barely breaking even or zero, yeah, you probably it's better than negative, that's for sure. If you have a negative net worth, it's time to start working on making sure that that changes so that you can get to a positive net worth. Now, one of the greatest helpers or one of the greatest things to be able to get to a positive net worth is to have a positive cash flow, which means you have more money coming in than what's going out. A lot of people who have a negative net worth are spending more than they're making, and so they're continually going into debt. So the idea here is to keep track and get, well, first of all, the, the idea is to know where you are. If you don't know where you are, then where you're going is not as important or doesn't really have as much effect. But find out where you are and then we can start working on where you're going, where you're heading or the direction that you're heading and then we can work to make course corrections. See, one of the good things about this, this whole process of accountability and measurements and keeping track is that with momentum, you can make corrections. If you're just standing still or inert or just doing nothing, it's hard to make changes or make corrections when you're when you're not moving forward. So making sure that you're moving forward pro positively is a good thing to do. And so tracking your net worth. So let me share with you what my net worth is or how I track my net worth. But before I do that, I wanna share with you what my total assets are. And I look at all of my assets. I don't have a lot of liabilities except for my mortgage and a student loan. So, uh, and actually a medical bill that I have uh, for my wife. So I'm gonna go through every one of my assets and all of my liabilities but before i do that i'm going to do uh, i want to show you my liquid asset distribution because there's liquid assets which is all your cash all your investable money and then there's total assets or total net worth and so i subtract the i pardon me i separate the two because i think it's important to note that um, the difference between your total net worth and your liquid net worth is important to keep track of so my liquid assets are 9.6% in liquid cash. That's money I have in like my checking and my savings account in the bank. I have 20% in precious metals. So I actually own gold and silver. That's something that I own to help me uh, in my investments as part of what I wanna do and have as part of my investments. Cash reserves. Now this is money that I have for my emergency fund. So 22, almost 23% of my total net worth is cash reserves. And then I have two and a half percent in crypto. Um, I wanted to have about 5% in crypto, but the way crypto is going, I actually literally cut it out. I did have 5% before the crash, but now that it's uh, crashed in about half the value, it's 2.5% of my net worth. And then stocks and ETFs are 45% of my total um, liquid assets. And so let me share with you now my to how I track my net worth, my total net worth uh, program here. So on the top here, you see in green, because assets are green for me, um, I keep track of all my assets. Now I've been keeping track each month, March through June, I kind of failed, I didn't keep track, but I picked it up um, from uh, January, February of this year, I started and then I picked it back up in July so I can track how well my net worth is, is going, if it's going in the right direction or not. And um, so if you see all of my, first of all, I have my bank account. So I have bank one, bank two, I've kept it generic so that you don't know which banks I'm at for my privacy. So I have bank one and bank two, and then I have Venmo, which is the cash that I hold in my Venmo account. I have cash on hand. So that's money that I just have in an envelope in a drawer. And then I have my silver and then I have my gold uh, um, separated out. Then I have a cash value life insurance policy that I've had for many years. 
I have my Webull account, which is where I do all of my dividend investing and all of my options trades. Then I have an M1 Finance account. M1 Finance to me is one of those places where you can just send money on a regular basis and it just invests for you in whatever pie or whatever uh, allocation you set up and then it automatically invests. You can't do options trading on it. Uh, you can do dividend and index investing. You can do all that stuff on M1 Finance, but you can't do options trading. So that's why I have two separate accounts, one where I can do dividend and options and the other one where I'm actually M1 Finance. I do have a lot of dividend stocks as well, but I have ETFs actually on my M1 Finance account, honestly. So I have over here the M1 Spend, which is their, their version of a checking account. And so I have $8,600 there on Yada, which is a high yield savings account. It's a prize link savings account. It's a fantastic way to save money. I think I'm averaging there about um, two to 3% on my uh, savings. Another thing I do with Yada is I use that because they have a program where you can split up all your savings into different buckets. And so it's a great way to do sinking funds for me and for what I've decided to do. Yada is where I have all my sinking funds for the different things that I do throughout the year. Like for example, if I'm saving up for my car insurance, I like to pay that annually because I get a discount. So I'll put that money into my car, car insurance bucket in my Yada savings account. Um, the next one here is Price Pool. Price Pool is another um, one of those prize linked savings account. They actually, I feel like they have a little bit better prizes, a little better opportunity to win prizes. If you ask me, you know, if you want to have one of those programs where it's a savings account, you just put the money in there and you know that's going to stay the same for a while. Price Pool is a really good opportunity. I have links for both Yada and Price Pool in the in the description below so that you can take an opportunity. Uh, the next one here is Coinbase. I have $450 in Coinbase. That was over a thousand at one point. You can see here back in February, it was over a thousand dollars and now it's at $458. And then I have some money in Binance and Binance is $2,400, literally at the beginning of the year, January is $6,100. So you can see I've had a significant loss in my uh, coin, in my cryptocurrency balances. So my total liquid assets. So remember yet, um, that chart that I showed you where those percentages were there. My total liquid assets assets are just about $120,000. Now I've got to subtract from that a few of my debts and I'll get to that down here when I get into the red square, which is all of my liabilities. But then I also want to track my total assets or my total uh, by having a, the difference between liquid assets and liquid net worth and total assets and total net worth. So Liquid assets are 120 plus I have my home and Zillow shows right now that my house is worth 668. So my total assets, if you include my house, 787,730 and 43 cents. That's my total assets, liquid and basically what are called hard assets. So liquid assets and hard assets. So uh, let's look down here at our liabilities now. So the first liability that I've listed here is my mortgage, which is 492,000. So it's a secured loan. It's secured against my house. My house is worth 668. My mortgage is 492. If I were to sell the house, I could walk away with, you know, $175,000 in cash. So that's an that's not necessarily an asset where it's paying me money, but it counts as an asset on my balance sheet because it's it's equity that I can access should I need to through a home equity line of credit or if I had to and just get out of everything, I could sell it, hopefully if houses are selling, and be able to just take care of all my debts and be okay. So this one here is my wife's student loan, it's 39,000. Uh, we're still on a furlough there. I've got another video coming up on the, the new updates to some of the things that are happening with the federal student loan forgiveness and, and uh, uh, cancellation. And then I have a medical bill that's uh, $3,300. I had a couple medic other medical expenses, but they all rolled into the one actually. Um, then total liability. So all of the money that I owe is $535,238.82. That's the total amount that I owe. So when you put that against what I own, which is $787,730.43, that means I have a total net worth down here of $252,491.61. That's my total positive net worth. Now my liquid net worth is $76,737.40. So that's, if I had to, and I didn't want to sell my house because we got to live somewhere. So I'm not going to sell my house, but I had to pay everything off. All of my other debts subtracted from all of my liquid assets. I have a $76,000 positive net worth with just liquid assets. That's not, that's excluding my home, my personal residence. So my, unfortunately, my liquid net worth went down 8% from last month, but my total net worth went up almost 1% from last month. So that had a lot to do with that Zillow on the, I think the value of my home. 
So one of the things that I think that this video is designed to do is to help inspire you to learn what your net worth is. Calculate your assets, calculate your liabilities, figure out what your net worth is, and then from there, see if you can work to increase it every month or at least every quarter. The way to become wealthy and the way to become financially independent and financially literate is to learn these skills to track your your income, track your expenses, track your cash flow, track your assets, track your liabilities, and co to continue to progress and grow and get better every time that you can, every month, every quarter, continue to grow. I hope you got a lot of value out of this video. If you missed the last video I produced, you can find it here. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel up here and catch this video up here that YouTube thinks you might like. Until the next video, have a great day.